I've got an interesting product to show you guys today. It's the Uperfect X Pro Lap Dock. It's a 15.6 inch portable battery powered monitor with an integrated kickstand. Uh, it looks a little bit like a Surface Pro, I guess, with its uh, detachable keyboard and trackpad here. And it's designed to connect via USB-C to any device which supports USB-C output. And of course the Steam Deck is one of those devices. So could you use this device to turn your Steam Deck into a gaming laptop? Let's find out. This lap dock is primarily designed for use with things like Samsung's DeX mode, where you can connect your phone and then use it like a laptop. Uh, but I'll be testing that out in another video, so if you want to see that, don't forget to subscribe. Um, but Uperfect specifically sent this over to me because they wanted me to test it with the Steam Deck. And uh, by way of full disclosure, uh, they sent it to me without charge. I'm not required to return it, but uh, Uperfect don't get any sight of the video before it goes live on YouTube and uh, we retain full editorial control. So we can give you our honest opinion of this device. I'm sure you know what a Steam Deck is, but if you're unfamiliar with this, this is the mighty gaming portable from Valve that gives you access to the vast majority of the Steam games library on the go. Uh, the slight downside, of course, is that not all PC games are suited to playing on a seven inch screen. And sometimes you just need keyboard and mouse input. So perhaps Uperfect's lap dock could be the answer here. Valve are expecting gamers to dock their deck and they've brought out their own Steam Deck specific dock which I've got here uh, and I'll be reviewing that very soon on the channel. But of course this dock requires you to bring your own monitor, keyboard and mouse. So let's have a rundown of the lap dock first and then we'll see how it does with gaming. There are lots of different models available but for this specific model you can have it as 4K or 1080p. The 4K model costs uh, £440 or $500, and a 1080p model is £343 or $390. Uh, and this is the 1080p model that we've got here. Uh, there wouldn't be much point in having the 4K model for Steam Deck use because the Steam Deck doesn't have enough graphics power to render games at that kind of resolution. Uh, let's just remove the keyboard and trackpad for a moment and just look at the display itself. It's a 16.7 million color depth, which supports 100% of the sRGB color gamut. The display itself is a WLED backlit IPS touch panel made by LG, and it runs at 60 hertz. The viewing angle is nice and wide at 178 degrees, and I have to say, it looks really good, uh, but it is quite reflective. Now that wouldn't be a problem, apart from the fact that the peak brightness is only 260 nits. Now, 260 nits would be fine so long as you're not in a brightly lit room. Um, I do think that lack of brightness is a bit of a shame though as it does let down an otherwise brilliant display. The display is touch enabled, it's got 10 point capacitive multi-touch and it supports things like two finger dragging to zoom in and that kind of thing, uh, provided the OS supports it. And you'll be pleased to hear that Steam OS does support it. Uh, the on-screen menu for the display itself also supports touch, which makes life much easier, though there is also a uh, push-wheel interface control over here on the left-hand side. The build quality of the display itself is really good. Uh, the case is all made out of aluminium, as is the kickstand, and the, the whole thing feels sturdy. The kickstand has got this nice resistance to it that allows you to choose any kind of viewing angle. You can rotate it through 180 degrees if you want to. It's uh, really impressive. It looks stylish, it feels premium. The display itself is really slim. I like the design. I like the fact that we've got rubber feet on the bottom, so when you've got it positioned like this, it's pretty stable on the desk surface. It's not gonna slide around too much. Uh, honestly, I'm, I'm, initial thoughts are that it's worth the price just for the monitor, but I'll come back to that. Um, on the right-hand side here, we've got two USB ports. Um, one is for power input and one is to connect to your device. Now it does support USB PD and it will pass through power to the Steam Deck. In fact, you can actually charge your Steam Deck from the internal battery of the lap dock, although that will drain this battery very quickly. The charging speed though, when you've got power plugged in through to the deck isn't particularly fast. It says it's gonna take something like six hours to fully charge the deck. And if you're playing a game and the deck is working hard and drawing power, then there's insufficient power being sent through to charge it, so it'll actually discharge as you're playing it. So if you want to charge and play, you're gonna to need to buy another USB hub to connect to your Steam Deck. Now, the battery inside is apparently 10,000 milliamp hours. I'm, I'm not sure about this because it doesn't feel heavy enough for that. 
or look large enough. Uh, Uperfect are claiming eight hours of video playback and four to six hours in desktop use, and I, I just don't understand those claims. Uh, it's a display, it's not got a processor in it, so what you're displaying shouldn't really make that much difference. Uh, it's all about the, the backlight, how bright you have it and how long it's on for. That's what's gonna determine your battery life. So I would take those figures with a healthy pinch of salt. Uh, we certainly haven't got close to four to six hours in our testing. Um, just cleaning the display there is picking up fingerprints. I can't bear fingerprints on my display. Touch screens are probably not for me. A nice touch that we have here is that there's a mini HDMI port on the side, which means that you can also use this display then with devices that don't have USB-C display out support. And I like the fact that this port is on the right hand side of the display. So that means that all of the main cables, your power input and your display cables are all on one side of the monitor. There is another USB-C port on the left hand side which you can use to plug in a hub or other USB devices like a, a wired keyboard or mouse. And there's also a headphone jack on this side and that's a useful addition. But there are stereo speakers on board. As you'd expect on a device like this, they don't have much in the way of bass response, but they do actually sound pretty good, and they're loud enough for playing at home. Uh, when you plug in the Steam Deck, it will automatically select those speakers, and you can turn the volume up and down using the controls on the deck if you want to. So, a very promising start, I think. Uh, let's attach the keyboard and trackpad. Now, if you're used to a Surface Pro, uh, you're gonna find this process pretty frustrating because the magnet placement it's just, I think I've done it. It's just not quite in the right space. I find that a little bit frustrating. I think that needs work and, and maybe that's something you perfect could improve with the next iteration. Uh, something you might notice is that by attaching the keyboard and trackpad, we've just lifted the front of the monitor up. So the rubber feet are no longer touching the desk, which uh, affects stability slightly, but it's still pretty good. And the typing experience on the keys uh, I found them to be nicely weighted. There's a decent response to them, although the spacing is a little bit wider than I'm used to. We have got some shortcut keys, which you use with the FM button for things like volume and brightness. Although what I found in SteamOS is changing the brightness using these keys doesn't actually seem to do anything. So you probably need to use the on-screen menu. But again, with that brightness, you're probably never gonna have it on anything other than maximum. I think the biggest downside to the keyboard is the amount of board flex that you've got. Now, unlike a Surface Pro where the keyboard kind of folds up and attaches magnetically to the front edge of the surface for extra support, we don't have anything like this on the laptop. So the keyboard is able to move and flex as you type. And that's not a particularly great feeling. Uh, when it comes to the trackpad, it's okay. Uh, if you're used to a Mac or a Windows Precision trackpad, then you're gonna find this one a little bit meh. Uh, it's got left and right click regions at the front of the trackpad, uh, but you can't click at the back. I find that slightly awkward, but it does support tap to click. So overall then, initial impressions are that the display is lovely, as long as you're not in a brightly lit room, and the keyboard and trackpad feels like it needs a bit more work. But let's get to the important thing. How does it game? Initially, we found that it was a little bit buggy when connecting directly to the Steam Deck when the Steam Deck is in gaming mode. In a couple of the games that we tried, we found that the trackpad didn't work properly and it just seemed to bug out the game. Now that may have been something specific to our deck or it may be something that is fixed in a software update. But uh, something to remember, of course, is that the Steam Deck is a PC. And with a device like this, perhaps you're gonna want to switch into desktop mode. Once we did that, everything worked as intended. And of course, you can launch games from the Steam app within desktop mode, just like you can on any PC. So I've spent a little bit of time using my Steam Deck as a Linux PC in desktop mode with this laptop. And the experience really surprised me. I'm actually thinking it might be interesting to try and use it for a day as my main work machine. Let me know if you'd like to see that in the comments section. Uh, incidentally, I do try to read all of your comments, uh, even if I don't have time to respond to all of them. And it does help with the YouTube algorithm and supports the channel. So thank you in advance for all of your comments. Now Ben spent a few hours uh, play testing this setup and he found that he had to quickly give up with the trackpad and he used a USB mouse instead. And actually I expect this would be the case with most gamers, even if the trackpad was better on the device. Ben spent some time with The Long Dark, Jurassic World Evolution and Timberborn and his conclusion was that it felt just like playing on his PC. 
Now it's important to say that he left the games running at the default Steam Deck resolution of 720p, and he was perfectly happy with the way it looked. I think it looks fine as well. But there is nothing stopping you changing the resolution to 1080p if you want to. Uh, but there is an important note here. If you're running the Steam Deck in its default gaming mode, then you can't select a resolution higher than 1280 by 720 the native resolution of the deck. So you do need to go into Linux desktop mode if you want to change resolution. Once you do that, you'll find that you have options for resolutions up to the 1080p resolution of this display. But obviously it depends on how demanding the game is as to whether the Steam Deck can render it at 60 frames per second. I just quickly tried the long dark at 1080p and I found I was getting 35 to 45 frames per second. And that's completely playable for a casual game, but it's not going to please anyone who likes to play competitive first person shooters. Uh, something else to note is that the Steam and menu buttons on the Steam Deck don't seem to work in desktop mode. So instead you need to use Shift Tab to get access to the standard Steam overlay. Which is a shame because I would have liked to have used the performance data overlay that comes with the Steam Deck. Um, but that's just not available it seems when you're running desktop mode. There's nothing stopping you just picking up the deck and using it as a controller whilst you're connected to the laptop. All of the normal controller inputs work fine in desktop mode. Uh, but you could also connect a Bluetooth controller if you prefer that. Now, just to clarify why we're using desktop mode, it was specifically because it resolved bugs with this specific keyboard and trackpad for us in our situation. Uh, if you're just planning to dock your deck onto a display, perhaps using the new Steam Deck dock, you don't need to use desktop mode. So overall, this is a pretty interesting experience and I think we need to draw some conclusions. And I, I believe there are two separate questions to answer here. First of all, is the lap dock a good partner for your Steam Deck? Yes and no. It really depends on how much time you spend playing games that need keyboard and mouse input, or just need a bigger display. And if you spend a lot of time playing those sorts of games, then is the Steam Deck the right solution? And by the time you've bought your deck and something like the lap dock, you're getting quite close to the price of a reasonable gaming laptop. On the other hand, if you primarily play controller-based games, but you want to have an occasional solution for other games, then I can see the benefit of something like this. It is an all-in-one docking solution, which is completely portable, and it does fold up nice and neat, it makes it ideal for travel, and there's no reason why you couldn't use it to get some work done too. Now, since the lap dock is versatile and it can connect to any USB-C or HDMI source, it's perhaps a nice thing to have around if you have other devices that could make use of it, uh, and then perhaps the purchase price makes more sense. When it comes to the Steam Deck though, I think there are some pretty big downsides. You won't be able to make full use of the 1080p resolution with top tier titles. And that power pass through issue is really a problem. Uh, it seems that you're going to need to charge first and then play rather than play whilst charging. The second question I think we need to answer is whether this Uperfect X Pro laptop is a good product and is it worth the asking price? Overall, I think so for some people. Now sure, the keyboard and trackpad we haven't been very complimentary about, and they're not the best, but they, it doesn't mean that they're useless. There are plenty of laptops out there with worse key action and worse trackpads. And at the end of the day, you can always take it off and use your preferred keyboard and mouse anyway. The display itself is really nice. It's well made, nice build quality, but it's let down by the lack of brightness and the overall reflectivity of the glass. And I think that brightness situation does actually impact the portability of the device. Imagine if you're taking it traveling. Well, it'll be fine once you're sat in your hotel room of an evening, but uh, sat in a bright airport lounge, possibly not so much. And now perhaps Uperfect could improve that with the next generation of these devices. And something like 400 nits, I think, is where they need to be getting to. It's probably true that some people won't be bothered by that, and they'll see the usefulness of having such a, a versatile setup. It does open up new possibilities for your Steam Deck, and I'm really excited to explore those possibilities, um, both with this product and also with the official dock. And naturally, I'll be sharing what I find with you all, so be sure to subscribe, leave me a like or a dislike, and please let me know what you think in the comments section. And I'll see you next time for some more geekery. You perfect.